in, interprets this as being nature and that what foiled Hera's plan was nature. And he states that nature always somehow intervenes. Uh, I disagree. Now, what I think it truly means, we take it step by step. Okay, under them, the divine earth sprouted fresh grass. Now, I believe that's a reference to nature. Okay, but the next thing we see is the flower, and a particular one, the dew-drenched lotus. Now, dew-drenched means it's early in the morning, so it is the beginning of something. And the lotus is the flower of Egypt. Now, I believe that the culture of Egypt early on in its religion was very closed, very dominating of its populace. Um, we see in um, Homer's Odyssey, Odysseus talks about it taking his men home and avoiding the lotus eaters because if he takes his men there they will no longer care to go home. They lose the will to come home. Now the second flower is the crocus. Now an interesting thing about the crocus, it was first cultivated in Crete. Now an interesting aspect of Crete's law is it somehow softens from the rigid, say, the Egyptians, in that uh, the king, Minos, every nine years would meet with his father, Zeus, in a cave, and they would revise the laws to accommodate the movement uh, of the culture. So this is a softening uh, of the laws. Again, rec again um, the example is that of a flower beauty. Now the final one, and it says, and the delicate hyacinth. Now, um, the hyacinth came, uh, in mythology we are told that hyacinth was a young, beautiful lad, and he challenged Apollo to a discus throwing contest. And Apollo eventually ends up throwing the discus, and they say that the wind carried the discus in the hit uh, Hyacinth in the head and killed him. And then sprouting from the earth where he died was the flower, the Hyacinth. Now, what I see here is the loosening of the control on the people has led to the arrogance or the hubris of man. He challenges the gods. Now, if we read the, the poet Sappho, she constantly refers to the hyacinth as purple. Purple is the color of royalty. This is the challenge of man's authority over that of the gods, even if it uses the authority of the gods for its authority. It is the challenge of man. I believe this is the situation that Homer finds himself at the end of the uh, Iliad. And this is the situation, the problem that arises that has to be dealt with uh, throughout uh, the classical Greek period. This is the way I, I put it at the end of my paper. Um, The struggle against this hubris will go on through the Odyssey, the tragedies, the poets, the comics, and finally Plato. Greece will put up a noble stand against the feminine call of nature and the masculine threat of hubris and set the example for others to come for millenniums. And that's it. I thank you.